So um, as I say, it's really nice to be here. I, I'm Helen Jepps, so I'm a clinical director for children's services here, but I am one of the paediatricians and I look after a group of children with complex heart conditions. So I'm going to be just trying to give you a little bit of a feel of what it's been like in Bradford and really across the UK working as a paediatrician over the past four months. Um, and if I was to summarise what I'm going to say in the next 10 minutes, it's really that we are really, really pleased and grateful to you all that all of the children will be coming back into school. Um, we are really, really keen to have, we feel that you are very, very key working with us to look after children and their families, and we're missing your input and the families are missing your input. And I think it's going to be really, really crucial for children across the board, and that's including our children with complex health problems, to be back in school and to have those experiences and the positive experiences associated with it. So when I was thinking about this last night, I, I transported myself back to sort of end of January, beginning of February, where we could hear, we could watch on the internet and watch on the news about this virus approaching us and you could watch it from China going into Italy. And it's been quite a phenomenal experience being able to speak to clinicians in Italy, in Boston, in Paris and hear their experience. And everything we heard was really reassuring. It told us that children were not being um, severely affected by COVID. It, it didn't stop us worrying, because we like to worry as a group of paediatricians, and we thought, well, we know that our children in Bradford do have really complex health problems, so let's plan for the worst. So we prepared to have increased numbers of children coming in, needing intensive care, and that preparation happened not just in Bradford, but across the region and across the UK. And then I quite clearly remember the day the first child came for testing. And we were all quite hyped up at that stage. We were anxious about what was going to happen. And I think that will be reflected in how your staff members are feeling as you're ramping up the numbers coming back in. And uh, I got this call saying this child arrived for testing. And it was almost like reading the manual of how to put your PPE on. And we had a phenomenal amount of support here in the Trust, but it was still really daunting. And that child was tested and went home. And I think very quickly within Bradford from that family, it circulated that somebody, a child with COVID had been in Bradford incorrectly. There were no children with COVID. But from that day, our numbers just dropped dramatically on the ward. So I can honestly say the past four months on the wards for us as paediatricians have been the quietest that they ever have been during my 20 years working in paediatrics. Um, to the point that it was almost embarrassing when my wonderful neighbours would cheer me on a Thursday night and I'd tell her, actually guys, it's just been quite a lovely day. And we obviously have tried to support our adult colleagues as much as we have. But genuinely, we have not had children coming in in large numbers sick with COVID. Um, to give you an idea of numbers, this is a couple of weeks out of date, this data, but the number of positive tests for children needing admission was round about 15 to 20 children over the time. Um, we need to be careful because we know that there are some false negatives and there were some children that looked like they had COVID but with negative tests, but we haven't had lots of positive tests coming in. In the same way, we certainly haven't had a lot of children needing to go to intensive care. And this has been mirrored across the region and across the UK. The numbers of children sick with it have been less than, for example, my children with complex cardiac conditions when you have a lot of flu around in Bradford. Um, so we really have seen what the literature has said has played out in Bradford. There's not been a lot of issues. Um, you would have seen on the media um, things about uh, Kawasaki type illness and uh, a pins tea illness associated with COVID for children. And yes, we have had some children coming in a few weeks after exposure to COVID with temperature and with abdominal pain and needing some treatment and intensive care. But again, we've been in that phenomenal situation where many countries have worked together, we've pulled data, and there's been nationally a really good treatment programme for those children and they've done well. So having said it's been really quiet, what we have seen are large numbers of um, significant mental health problems in children. And so I'm really grateful Sasha is going to be speaking to you about that because that's really key and why we're so, so keen for children and teenagers to be back in school. We've also seen some quite complex safeguarding and it'd be fair to say it worries us because we haven't seen large numbers 
but we have seen some really complicated cases and, and you know how closely we work, we work with yourselves and the school health visitors and school nurses and we really really want people to be accessing these children and checking they're okay so I just wanted to speak about shielding and children with complex health issues um, I think at the beginning when we didn't have good sets of data we were trying to think of children that might be more severely affected the, than others and we were thinking of children with severe respiratory problems um, with cardiac issues and we made a relative list of people at high risk but as times progressed, it's really clear that you know, these children are not presenting more frequently. That there is a slight increase in frequency of children with underlying problems coming into the ward, but in general, they're not that sick. So there is a real drive at the moment. Um, some updated advice was published two weeks ago by the college, um, and last week that was accepted by the government. Um, many children, what we know is we think many families and children have been told to shield who perhaps don't need to shield. Um, so we're trying to ensure that um, any family that's been told to shield from the trust, from the hospitals, has been given that advice correctly and the numbers are really small. Um, so many, almost all of children in Bradford will be being encouraged to come back into school in September. It's obviously slightly different for the special schools. My CDC colleagues are working very, very hard looking to make sure that the right advice is given for every family. But if you're talking about children with health problems who are being looked after by a GP, so for example, children with asthma, with epilepsy, or children with conditions such as diabetes, in general, our advice really strongly is they should be in school. Um, just to give you a feel for the numbers of children that we think should be out of school, for my list of children with heart problems, about 700 or 800, there are about four children that we're considering it. Um, and I suspect that actually two of those will say go back in. There are going to be a few children potentially on various treatments, um, post-transplant, um, associated with cancers, children with inflammatory arthritis, but, but there aren't going to be masses. Um, that led us to think, how can we help you? Because I suspect there are still a few families who may have been given advice by different health professionals and think that they're not um, able to be in school. We're hoping we've been in touch with most of them by now through clinics. But, but our feeling was that if you have a child who the family is saying they can't be in school for health reasons, because the numbers are so small, we're hoping to give you a central email address for us here in the Trust. So you can speak to that family, check that they're happy, and then link in with their named consultant through a central email. Um, and we will then make contact with that family and really ensure that the advice um, that they've got is right for their child and that they understand it correctly. And for the very, very few children, we'll confirm to you that they should be at home. But for the others, we will reassure the family and hopefully um, make that transition back to school easier. As I say, I'm, I'm hoping that will be small numbers. There are some um, families being corresponded with this week as things have changed. But by next week, they should all be aware. Okay. So in summary, I, I think we're really, really supportive and really grateful to see you all here today to work together. I think children being back in school is going to be fantastic for them and we're really looking forward to it.